Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2 Finale by Lorne Margulis. This is the third time I'm doing this video. The first time I did it on my laptop and I couldn't upload because my router went down. Um, so it got deleted, and I used someone else's computer, uploaded it um, from somewhere else, and while the video worked, I was sort of inaudible. Um, and I really don't expect people to listen to a 40 minute video when they can't hear most of it. Uh, so anyone that did comment on that video, I did actually comment back to you, um, or I did reply to you. If Obviously you might not have seen the reply because I took the video off last night, um, so I apologize. Um, I'm pretty much going to say the same stuff, maybe a couple of new things here and there. So if you saw the last video, you know, you're not going to get, uh, I'm going to try to be as animated as I can. Uh, saying these things for like the third time now, but um, yeah, so it's basically it's up to you if you want to watch, as as it always is anyway. Um, but all right, getting into the episode, I I also again I'm gonna split the review half non book reader stuff, half book reader stuff. So and I'll let you know when I do that. Uh, I love the episode. Um, I had the problems that I had with are the same problems that I've had with this season. Um, and they're forgivable problems that I'll get into later on. Um, the thing about the finale is that last year's finale was basically one big epilogue uh, with everyone dealing with what happened to Ned, um, with the exception of Danny, who's dealing with her own someone dying problem with Drogo. Um, so yeah, it was basically one big epilogue because episode 9 last season was like the climax of the whole season. This season, because of Blackwater... Um, which was, you know, essentially the climax of the King's Landing stuff. Because of that, all the other characters still had to get to their, um, you know, their ending before they could be set up to for the following season. So the writers had almost, like, double duty this week. They had to wrap up everyone's story for Season 2 and set up their story for Season 3. Really difficult thing. The episode was an extra ten minutes long. I mean, it could have been another half an hour long, um, to be honest. Um, and... Everyone, I understand that they need everyone in the season finale, uh, just like they need everyone in a season premiere. But I gotta say, like this time when we cut to Arya at one point in this episode, I was kind of sitting there, just kind of disappointed. I was like, oh, you know, I wanted to see what was going on with someone else. I kind of forgot about Arya, and I love Arya, so uh, that was very odd. Uh, but anyway, on to the uh, the stuff, the King's Landing. Um, I like the opening with Tyrion's uh, eyeball, the way it changed. Um, there's a lot of uh, ice and fire imagery in this episode, which is the title of the book series, Song of Ice and Fire, so I just kind of noticed that. Um, all of Tyrion's stuff in this episode and this season, he's had a great arc the whole season. Um, all his stuff in this episode, I love the, the scene with Pycelle. He was just being such like, you know, a jerk. He was really good, the actor who played Pycelle in this episode. Uh, very different from how we usually see him. Um... But the, the scene with Tyrion and Varys was just really, really well just well done. They've had great stuff this season. It's sad to see that that's going to change, I guess, from now on. And the scene with Shay, I mean, you know, Peter Dinklage is um, really, I think he's got a, a shot at another Emmy, pretty much. Um, and yes, I teared up during that scene. I did. So sue me. It wasn't the first time, um, or excuse me, it wasn't the last time it happened in this episode either. Um... But yeah, great stuff. Um, as far as there was a scene with Roz and Varys, Roz, everyone's you know, everyone loves Roz, and um, although I will say that for the first time, she got a scene that was actually about her a little bit, about maybe the future of her character. Um, pretty much every other scene for the rest of the series, whatever scene she was in, she was used as a plot device and just used to kind of say something about. Whatever the other whatever the other character was in the scene with her, uh, I didn't say that well. Um, you know, just like the scene with you know with Littlefinger with when well, it was her and the other girl in the first season, or the scene where she's beaten the other you know uh, escort this season. It was more about Joffrey, you know, sitting there and doing that. Uh, but the scene with her and Vars was actually you know showed some potential for her, and David and Dan, the writers of the show, I think they're gonna have to start doing this. She can't become a plot device for the rest of the series. It can't happen. They need to 
make they need to give her something to do um, that betters her character, not just everyone else's. Um, and if they can do that, then I think it'll justify leaving her around. So, but we'll see. Um, the all the like I said, all the King's Landing stuff was like pure epilogue because Blackwater was the climax. Um, you know, setting up that King's Landing is going to be an absolute circus next season, with the uh, Tyrells now showing up, uh, and adding that Tywin is there. Um, plus, you got Littlefinger is, is back in King's Landing along with Varys and Pycelle and everyone. It's just going to be and Cersei. You know, it's just going to be a, a nut house. You know, more so than usual next season. Um, and I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. It, um, it was nice to see Sansa happy for about, a series. I think it might have been, it might have been two seconds, uh, before Littlefinger just, like, ruined it for her and the audience, pretty much. Um, yeah, and he was particularly creepy in his little speech, you know, giving the same speech he gave to Ned, and, you know, that turned out so well, uh, about helping someone for Catelyn's sake. Uh, yeah, so very creepy. Um, but yeah, King's Landing should be fun next season. Okay, um, Arya, it was a very short scene. Arya's scene did feel like an epilogue, um, and, uh, they pretty much, it was just a very quick, like, setup that, uh, not only for what Arya's gonna do in season three, she said, basically laid out that she's gonna go try to find her family, and then if she gets around to it, she's gonna go give that coin to someone eventually. Um, but I was sad to see Jock and Hagar go, uh, at least the actor. Um, he will be missed. Uh, what else, as far as that goes? Um, it would be fun to see Arya and everyone on the road again, though. I kind of like the the road adventure thing on the show. I, it's it's always you always get good stuff um, with that. I, I, it's better than when they're all always like cooped up in a room. Although the writer uh, the writers are good at doing one on one scenes like they did this year with her and Tywin. I still prefer it on the when they're on the road and stuff. Uh, and speaking of that. Jamie and Brienne had a great one scene uh, in the episode that told its own like little mini story um, that basically by the beginning of the scene to the end it basically solidified that Brienne means it when she says she's doing this for Catelyn and Jamie is not going to be able to get out of the situation as quickly um, and I'll say the thing about Jamie is that he uh, he was in four episodes this season uh, yet, and he's my favorite character, and yet I didn't miss him in the other six episodes that he was out of. I mean, I missed him, but not, you know, to the point where I was sitting there screaming, like, where's Jamie? I'm so disappointed. Because the show writers know, know that him sitting in a cell doesn't work as drama for television, so they left him out. Um, and, uh, I'm gonna bring that point back later on when I get to the spoiler section. Um, but yeah, the whole idea is that, you know, now Jamie and Brienne together is something interesting, and we're going to see a lot of it next season. Um, and it's clear, because it's going to be an absolute blast. Uh, let's see, anything else on the two of them? Um, her, the whole two deaths thing, that was, you know, that was pretty awesome, and, uh, and yeah, but I think everyone kind of agreed on that pretty much, so that's not really anything new. Um, let's see... Oh, Stannis and Melisandre, another scene that over the span of five minutes, this was another epilogue feeling scene, as was the Jamie Brienne one. In the span of five minutes, we got to see Stannis's complete remorse and rejection of Melisandre to completely coming back around, and it made, and I kind of understood it, too, and they were able to tell, like, a mini five-minute story, um, which, again, I'll get to later on in the non-spoiler section of this review. Um... The, it was nice to see Stannis show some remorse and see Melisandre be, you know, kind of flustered about what had gone wrong for him. Um, it made his line last week when he said, you know, you know hundreds are going to die, and he just kind of shrugs it off thousands. He said it clearly now because he thought it was the, the only way to go and to be king, and that's why he did it. If he had, clearly it shows now, if he had any uncertainty about it, he wouldn't have done it. Or he would have felt remorse, because he did, as he felt remorse about his brother. Um, so I thought that was really, uh, really nice. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as what he saw in the fire, that's just a pure, like, setup thing for, you know, the following season. Um, it's such a TV thing to do. 
and uh, it's such like a cliffhanger thing to do. Uh, but I didn't mind it because it is a you know finale, and it's supposed to be a cliffhanger. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, also, not having Dragonstone in the credits was lazy and confusing, I'm sure, for some people. I knew it was Dragonstone right away, but I don't know why they had Harrenhal and, um, and Pike in the credits when we didn't see them on the show, but no Dragonstone. Um, so very weird. Um, okay, Rob and Cat. Rob is a whiny little piss ant. That's what I got out of Rob in this episode. And... What's not good about that is we're supposed to, you know, adore Rob completely. And I don't. He's annoyed me now. From the, I thought his best scene this season was the very first one. That's not a good thing when your best scene is the first one. Because uh, that means it's all downhill from there. Uh, I hated the way he was treating his mother. Um, you know, clearly, I, and I understand that obviously we're supposed to look at him. And look at him and just like you know facepalm him. Just like you are fucking up, buddy. Um, you know you're marrying her. You've known her for like a month, and you're marrying her. Um, I understand wanting to be with her. She's gorgeous, but marrying her and going against like this oath and clearly the show is setting it up, you know, to be a problem for him. So as a setup for that kind of stuff, that's fine. Um, but I wish I just wasn't as irked with Rob as I am. Uh, so yeah. Um, Theon, uh, Alfie Allen also deserves to be nominated for an Emmy, and he's had a great season like Tyrion, a whole season arc, uh, which some of the other characters can't have on this show. Uh, but he has, and you can tell even the scene with, with Maester Lewin, it's a scene that gives him time, or gives the audience time to really see what he's thinking about, so when he does stuff, we can, if not understand, we can, you know, um... Which well, I say, if not relate to, we can understand a little bit what his reasoning is. We may not agree with it, but we can understand it. Um, I loved his problem with that fucking horn blower. Uh, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Um, and it was it was an absolute great speech that I thought was actually really, really well done and stirring and completely hilarious that they just like waited to knock him out at the end. Um, also a nice little setup for next season. So, um, yeah, it was very funny. What wasn't funny was what happened to Maester Lewin. Um, him dying in the Godswood with Rickon and Bran by his side was not funny at all. That was another tear-up moment. Um, I think that was only, I only had two, so that was the second one. Um, just brutal. Art Parkinson, who plays Rickon, you know, I have no problems with that he, I think, is going to be, he's going to be good on this show as he gets older and they have to, they have to give him more to do. I think he's going to be able to handle it, which is nice. Um, I originally... I thought that he was better in the scene than Bran, because he was more, like, distraught-looking. But then I kind of realized that Bran was maybe trying to be strong, stronger for his brother, and trying to really, you know, uh, grow up. Uh, which is sad to see, but that's what he has to do. Um, also, props to the showrunners for figuring out a way not to break the guy playing Holder's back by putting Bran in a wheelbarrow. Really, really good job. Um... And it was very sad to see Winterfell on fire. We don't know who did it. Uh, clearly, that's a setup for next season. So, um, yeah. So sad to see Maester Lewin go. He was an awesome, awesome character. Uh, also, there'll be another road trip next season. That's like the third road trip going on for season three. Which, again, I'm fine with. Um, Danny finally getting something awesome to do. Um, the... Um, her going into the House of the Undying, the imagery of her in the throne room was gorgeous, and it pisses me off once again that we're losing Alan Taylor, who directed four episodes a season, to Thor 2. It makes me excited to see Thor 2 basically just for him. I think it's going to be a better movie than that first one. Um, but, uh, anyway, it was just beautiful imagery, uh, and it was just so surreal to see her there. And clearly it's supposed to be foreshadowing that winter is coming and the roof was blown away, which is supposed to be, I guess, dragon fire, you know, can melt stone. Um, so very, like, evil kind of foreshadowing for what would be, you know, the best scenario for her. Um, which I guess was kind of the point um, of the whole thing. That uh, these guys are basically telling her, look, this is what you, you know, this is what you're, you're trying to do. Like, don't do that. Stay here. Uh, stay here with your dragons, pretty much. Um, unless they were trying to keep her also in the throne. She went to touch the throne and she didn't. 
Um, just like when she saw Drogo, who I called it that he was going to be in the episode, she went to kiss him and she didn't. Um, which is why I like the scene, because she grew up a bit. Um, and by the way, I love that the dragons are an absolutely adorable, yet they look so pissed off all the time. I think it's hilarious that they're just sitting there just, you know, they're in like chains, they're like, this is bullshit. That's what, they, that's what their like faces all look like. Um, yeah, and yes, Piat Pri, you know, fucking idiot for just like, you know, basically looking down the batter, barrel of a shotgun, staring at them. Uh, but fuck him, who cares. Um, yes, again, beautiful imagery, a lot of ice and fire stuff, so uh, I liked it very much. And, by the way, Amelia Clark, so much better when she's still, and she's not over-emoting and not screaming, because she seems like such like a petulant kind of child when she's doing that. Much like, I guess maybe that is supposed to be the point. And that by the end of the season, she grows up and she can you know, just be more mature and just still. And cold as ice, locking the two of them in that chamber. Um, you know, you watch this show, you think about the scene with Doria and Daenerys, episode 2, season 1, where Doria's teaching him how to please Drogo. Try watching that scene now and thinking, like, yeah, she's going to lock you in a vault. And you're basically going to be eaten by, uh, by duck sauce over there. Um... Now, he's a big guy, you know, he's got some needs, so that's, I mean, that's, what a horrible, horrible way to go. Um, great musical score to, to end the, the season by, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. I think it's like Raman Dajwadi or something like that, who does the music for the show. He's outdone himself this season. Um, yeah. So, okay, moving on to John. Um... John's story, John in general just suffered this season. He, um, I mean, story wise and quality wise, um, you know, the, he had one like five minute scene in this episode, and it has this, you know, it has to like reestablish where they're going, it has to have this whole sword fight that's supposed to mean something, and then it has to, which is basically the climax of John's story, and then it has to set up, you know, season three with Mance Raider's camp. It succeeded on the setup part, because um, him overlooking Mance's camp with Egret, you know, it was nice. It was it was something like, okay, I can't wait to see that next season. So that works, um, but the whole scene was just so quick, and even I had like you know non-book readers here watching the show, and you know, one like cheered when he killed Halfman. It's like, no, 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 he's not supposed to be, you know, he wanted him to do that. So they didn't quite get the point across um, as well as they could have. And obviously the scene was supposed to be you know, big and emotional, and it just, looking at it through the whole season, it just doesn't work. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, get, I'll speak about that a little more uh, in the non-spoiler section at this already 18-minute video. Um, oh, by the way, where's Ghost? Where's Ghost? It seems to be like a mantra people are yelling about. Normally, I'm someone that says, hey, you know, it costs money, but where the hell was Ghost? Uh, Ghost was supposed to fight him. Help help him beat Half-Hand in the uh, episode. And uh, I guess maybe it'd be too ridiculous to kind of to film that. That would be why. But still, where's Ghost? Uh, the ending was stunning. All the comparisons to Walking Dead are fine, except uh, they brought over Rick's horse from The Walking Dead. Uh, which I loved, and seeing the White Walker was just this side of creepy and um, uh, amazing, pretty much. Uh, it was a great, you know, chilling, no pun intended, ending to the season. Um, a season that gunned to my head, um, I would say season one was better, um, just because this season's problems, you know, we're there pretty much every episode of having so many characters. There are problems that, you know, hopefully they can remedy next season. Uh, we'll see. Um, also, you know, season one had all these great episode endings, where season two, a lot of their episodes ended on kind of like a whimper, just kind of, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's just like an example of it. Um, but I still, I still absolutely love this season and the nitpicks that I, you know, have that I'll get to more of them in the non spoiler section. I mean, those nitpicks, you know, do, you know, it's like I, they basically maybe take up 5% of my enjoyment of the show, to be honest, so, um, so yeah. Alright, I'm gonna get on to the, um, 
spoiler section now, so if you haven't read the books, stop, stop, stop watching. Stop. Okay? Okay. Um... I like that King's Landing we're setting up that when Varys does help Tyrion escape, it just it will feel, you know, more believable than I think in the book. In the books, you really kind of don't know what he's up to, or you're kind of guessing. Um, I mean, you're still guessing on the show, but I, I just kind of like that that is set up a little bit. Uh, not that I think they're going to get to that next season. That's probably going to be season four. Uh, I hope they have scenes next next year with each other, but we'll see. Um... Ba -ba -ba. Uh, show Shay is better than Book Shay. Um, yeah. So, props to the writers on doing that. I can't stand her in the book. Couldn't stand her in the book, I should say. Uh, and when he chokes her to death in, again, I guess season four, I think it's going to be, you know, doubly painful. Um, which is a good thing. Uh... Roz, I have no idea where Vars is sending Roz. Some people think maybe to Danny. Uh, whoa. Sunlight helping with the review. Thank you, Sunlight. Don't need you. Um, sorry about that. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Ah, Roz, yes. The sunlight of the show, Roz. Um, yeah, I don't know what he's doing with her. That's all I have to say about Roz. Okay, anyway. Uh, Tyrant's horse shitting, not in the throne room, but shitting outside of it was a nice, you know... A nice uh, touch. I was looking forward to seeing if they would do that. Um, Joffrey didn't cut himself in the throne. That's too bad. But, you know, he's not as much of a child uh, on the show as he is in the books. Um, the Tyrells, for again, for next, I love the addition of the Tyrells. I love that Marjorie is not as innocent. I think her, Loras, and they're casting, you know, the Queen of Thorns next season. I think it's just going to make it, like I already said, just an absolute blast for next season. Um, and uh, they're setting up Sansa and Littlefinger. I don't know if they're going to be cutting Dantos. Some people think they're just going to, like, remove Dantos completely, which is a shorthand version of doing what the books did. But I don't know if they're going to do that. Maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe they're not doing that at all, but I'm just, it just, it's possible. Uh, I hope they don't, but we'll see. Um, although setting up her and Littlefinger is, you know, important. And I think people have, again, have to realize they're upset that Littlefinger's been Doctor Whoing around all of Westeros, pretty much. But he's a relevant character in the books. He's so important to everything that's going on that having him off screen for so long is just, it, that would hurt uh, stuff in the long run. That's why I think they're keeping him on as much as they are. Um,. And because they have to invent so much stuff, that's why all of his... Not all of his scenes are as well done as some of the other stuff on the show. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion on that. Um, Arya, they teased that face change. I thought they weren't going to do it. Of course, he goes like this in the book. Um, in the show, he just... Um, you know, he did the quick... By the way, great gifts online uh, of that. You People got to check that out if you haven't seen it. It's just really funny stuff. Um... Uh, I look forward to everything with Arya next season with the Brotherhood and the Hound. I assume it's all going to end up. Um, yes, again, I would like to have seen her got her got the kill of, of the guard, but it looks like they're probably going to wait for that to when she gets Needle back, I guess, which is fine. Um, she's still going to become an assassin, so people complaining about her not getting all these kills, you know, she's going to get it eventually. Um, so, yeah. Jamie and Beren, I'm so glad I was wrong that I thought they were going to do their sword fight. Instead, that's saved for next season. Their next season arc is going to be absolutely fantastic, hopefully ending with him saving her from the bear pit. I don't know how the hell they're going to do the bear pit. Um, but it's just going to be uh, a wonderful season for both of them, I think. They're going to be in so many episodes, I hope. Um, I think It's really going to be a great season for both of them next year. I can't. I really just can't wait pretty much for it. Uh, Stannis and Melisandre, that was the Melisandre from Dance with Dragons that is unsure, which people complaining that she's not like that, she's a little bit like that, you look at the point of view. Stannis not being as rigid, being a little more emotional and a little more sympathetic, people watching the show should be used to this by now, it's clear the writers love that the books, all these characters are morally gray, the showrunners are making them all kind of light gray, where they're just leaning that much more toward the good. Um, which makes everyone, I th making everyone more sympathetic, I like the choice because that means you just care about people more. 
Um, and what's wrong with that? Um, yeah, what's wrong with that? Um, let's see. He does show remorse about killing Renly in the books also. So, you know, it's different in a different way, but yeah. And him looking into the fire, I don't know what he saw. Maybe the other kings dying, or maybe his victory at the wall. or Well, not at the wall, but, you know. I don't know. I really don't. Um, let's see. Rob and Catelyn, I, I understand that they had to sacrifice Catelyn's character for Rob to have screen time this season, because they couldn't just cut Rob. And, but the problem ended up being that they did a disservice to both of them. Um, Rob, because they gave him more to do, but again, by the end of the season, I just kind of dislike him. Um, or he annoys me. Um, they're setting up the Red Wedding very well, even having a wedding in this episode to next season. So clearly, I mean, again, I understand what they're doing and why they had to do it this way. It just didn't work out as well. It's just, you know, simple as that. It just did not work out as well. Um, you know, but I can forgive them for it because I kind of understand, you know, why they had to do it. Catelyn a little bit less for releasing Jamie. They could have easily fixed that by just saying that, you know... I did it because he was going to get his head chopped off and then he'd be useless anyway. Um, so I really didn't like... I hated that they did that to her character. Um, I mean, it was a dumb decision in the book, but an understandable one. On the show, it was a little less understandable, and that's not a good thing. Um, but yeah, we'll see River Run next season, so, you know, it'll be fun to see those interactions. And, uh, and again, I'm not knocking Richard Madden or Michelle Fairley, who are great in all their scenes and everything like that. It's just, um, yeah, you know. That was a great ending for that, wasn't it? Come on, son. Shit. Um, Theon feeling trapped was in the book, but he was more remorseful on the show about everything, which, again, I liked. Jesus Christ. Um, he, um, it was a great scene with Maester Lewin. Um, his getting, him getting bagged by his own men was, I think, a good idea because it allows us to save the casting of Ramsay Bolton to next season. Um, I'm interested to really see if they're going to keep him on the show or how they're going to have to do that. Um, should be pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, just think about what happens and how unbelievably complicated it would have been to do everything they did with uh, the way they did it in the book, with how it ends here. So, no problem with it. Um, Maester Lewin was sad in the book, it was sadder on the show. Um, let's see, anything else about them? Um, uh, yeah, time to meet the Reeds next season, which I think is good because it's going to give it more padding next season for Bran and Rickon, which they're going to need. I assume they're not going to make it to the wall until the end of season three. Um, so, uh, they're gonna need introductions of new characters. So, yeah. Uh, Danny. Okay. As a book reader, was I disappointed in the House of the Undying? Of course. Anyone that read the book would be disappointed in... in how the chapter was realized on the show. Because the chapter is so good in the book, and it's, you know, such a big part of it. Um, so of course, you know, you have I mean, you... I think someone's lying. They say they're not disappointed that they didn't get to see what was in the House of the Undying. I knew we weren't going to get to see Rhaegar. I was hoping for some Red Wedding foreshadowing. Um, but I can understand why they didn't do that. Um, you're thinking about it, that it would have been maybe too spoiler. Spoilerish, pretty much. Uh, and too obvious. When you read the book the first time, you know, you don't think about it. Uh, on the show, I think seeing it, you would be, you would be thinking about it. Um... Maybe I'm wrong, but whatever. But the point of the scene of why I didn't mind it is that, you know, I know we didn't hear about the three betrayals either, although I don't really understand them that much in the book. Apparently two have already happened, maybe. One is supposed to be Jorah, I guess. Um, so it's kind of up in the air on that for me anyway on the books. Um, the thing is, on the show, Danny comes out of the House of the Undying uh, changed, different, which is fine. She does that in the books, too. She's more, I guess you could say, untrustworthy of everybody. Um, maybe has a better understanding of things, you know, has certain ideas kind of planted in her head about how to go about, you know, things now. Um, and I think the show, you know, the book did that, and I think the show did that. So she basically arrives at the same 
place in her head, pretty much. Uh, also, we got plenty of ice and fire, like I said, imagery in this episode. And in, in even in that section. Um, which I think, you know, was enough for me to be happy with not getting the A Song of Ice and Fire line, pretty much. Um, I did think for a second she was going to see John north of the wall, which would have sent the shippers into, like, you know, into, like, near suicide, I think. It just would have been crazy. Um... Let's see. I mean, yeah, she comes out the same way, with the dragons helping her. Um, so, again, yes, disappointed as a book reader, of course, but disappointed as someone just, you know, watching a story on television unfold? No, not at all. Um, I thought it was a great climax to her season. It was a great ending to her season. And, man, that epilogue, yeah, I guess we're not going to see... Um, oops. Hold on a second. I guess we're not going to see Zaro until... Why is my computer doing this with the voice? Uh, not going to see Zaro to um, season, you know, or not going to see him at all, unlike the books. Uh, let's see. Sorry if my speakers are screwing up, which they are right now. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Zaro's not really that important. He's a, he's a secondary character anyway. I guess Mirren will just be overtaken from within when we get to season five anyway, so whatever. Um, okay, as far as John goes, uh, my biggest problem is that, like I said about Jamie, Jamie was only in only four episodes this season, John was in eight, and I was wrong about saying that, oh god, these speakers are gonna really screw up the end of this review. Sorry about this, guys. Um, let's see. I was wrong... What was I wrong about? Oh, saying that Egret, The scenes with Egret were better than keeping him with uh, Half Hand. I was kind of wrong about that. I understand why they did it in the long run, but it didn't serve as this season. Um, it didn't serve as this season's finale. It didn't make the moment where he kills Half Hand in the books as emotional as it was in the show. Nowhere near as emotional. Um, let's see. Um... You know, John should have been in six episodes a season with 15 or 20 minutes per episode instead of eight with, like, five minutes here and there. Uh, so I hope that's something they can remedy next season. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut this short because these speakers are shitting all over everything right now. Um, um, what else? Yeah, Three Blasts was the prologue to A Storm of Swords. The show um, chose to end the season on it. It was a great choice. Uh, I wonder if they're going to include the White Walkers more than they did in the books on, on the show. We'll see. Um, okay. Great season. Um, any problems, again, I had with it, I think you have to understand that David and Dan had to adapt a huge book into ten hours, and they had to do it quickly. They'll have more time next season for A Storm of Swords, which may create new problems, but I think in the long run it'll be better for the show. Alright, guys. That's it. Adios.